There are many different creatures that live on earth. Each of them have their own way of life, the way they eat, and each of them have their own lifespan. Some animals only live for a few days, some only live for a few years, some live for a few decades, but you also have animals that live for centuries. Like for example, the Aldabra giant tortoise is the oldest creature on land. The oldest of these tortoises has lived up to 255 years and that's according to the statistics that have been taken by scientists. So the age that we're announcing has been recorded and proven by scientists. We're not just pulling that number out of our butt. We also have to say that plants are also living things and they count as organisms. But these living beings live for an extremely long time. Like for example, do you see this tree in California? It's called the Methuselah. And scientists and experts have estimated that this tree is 4,855 years old. You might say, what about Sarva Abarku in Iran, one of the oldest trees in the world? Experts cannot actually measure the age of this tree. If they try, they will damage it and there is a slight chance that it will be killed. But they believe that it's about 4 to 5,000 years old, which makes it almost the oldest tree in the world. But let's go back to different organisms and leave plants alone. You have to know that sea sponges are also counted as sea creatures, but they don't move that much. Like the glass sponges that you could find in the South China Sea are more than 10,000 years old. But we're still not looking for these types of creatures. We are looking for complex life. Animals that have brains, muscles, they hunt, and they move around very easily. If you want to put plants sponges aside and only count animals, the longest lifespan after the Aldabra turtle, which is 255 years old, belongs to the Greenland shark. This shark can live for more than 400 years. The shark you're looking at right now is very much alive and it has an age of about 396 years and that means it was born in the 17th century, the year 1627 to be exact. And if you want to get a better perspective, this shark that you're seeing is older than Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton and generation after generation people died but this Greenland shark remained in the water and it swims around to this day. Just like we said, this is a Greenland shark, so it's a shark. But it's not a type of shark that you and I know of. These guys fall under the sleeper sharks. They're very slow, peaceful, they don't move very quickly. And of course, they do everything calmly. Maybe one of the reasons that these sharks live for so long is the calmness. In a way, it seems like they have no stress whatsoever. If you pay attention, turtles and tortoises are the same. They don't worry much, they're extremely slow and relaxed, and that causes them to have a very long lifespan. Another interesting fact about the Greenland shark is that they don't really come up into warmer water. They love the cold water. The flaps of this shark, which is much smaller, and its nose that it's rounded rather than sharp, is the main characteristics of the Greenland shark. So if anybody knows these sharks a little bit, just by those two factors, they can tell that this is a Greenland shark. And it's not as big as like a great white shark. It's not like it's small. The great white shark is about six meters long, but Greenland sharks have an average length of about two meters. But in some very rare occasions, these Greenland sharks could be as big as 5 meters. We all know that sharks are predators. And even though it's a calm animal, it still has to fill his belly. So they will catch anything to eat. The Greenland shark will eat any type of fish in the water. They will even eat baby sharks. But in the cold northern waters of planet Earth, there is plenty of food to go around. There's a whole menu down there. And that's one of the main reasons it does not have problem finding food. And maybe that's why it evolved to be a very sleepy and calm creature. It knows it will get its food no matter what. Another fact about the Greenland shark 
is that it's the slowest moving large animal in the water. The maximum speed of this sea creature is only 1200 meters an hour or 1.2 kilometers an hour and that shows us how slow this shark is. This very slow speed shows us that if any person is confronted with this shark, it could literally swim away and be faster than a predator in the water. It's not like the Greenland shark is the main threat in this type of water. These guys live in the northern sea and it's very cold. So the number one threat to your life is the hypothermia. Even in the summertime, the northern sea is very close to freezing. And the reason that it doesn't freeze is because it's an ocean and it's extremely difficult to freeze a huge body of water like that. But that extremely low temperature is still there. This shark could very easily go as deep as 2200 meters. This is quite impressive. A very experienced scuba diver with all the equipment that's available for them, the maximum depth they can go down is 500 meters and this is extremely difficult. But nobody's actually allowed to go that deep. But that just shows us how insane 2200 meters is for the Greenland shark. This is a sleeper shark. It's very slow. It doesn't even have proper vision. So how does it actually hunt you down? You have to know that the Greenland shark goes blind after 100 years old. But it's not like it's going to affect its performance. It doesn't really rely on its eyes whatsoever. The way the Greenland shark approaches its target or its prey, the prey doesn't even realize that it's going to be eaten. That's how slow this animal moves through the water. When they move, they don't create any sound, they don't create any waves. So when the prey is being eaten, they don't even realize what just happened. The way the Greenland shark eats, it kind of sucks everything up with a lot of seawater. But other sharks don't do that, they actually tear off limbs and stuff. But the Greenland shark prefers to eat it in one bite. It also has a very slow metabolism, so it doesn't need a lot of food to survive. Even though it's extremely huge, it doesn't need the amount of food you would think it needs. You could say it's very easily satisfied. It eats two fish and it's good for a few days. And that's maybe one of the reasons it's so stress-free. It's very relaxed and it has such a long lifespan. But if it's a normal shark, it wants to attack anything, create blood everywhere, have a lot of stress and their lifespan is not as long. The longest like a great white shark could live is 70 years, but its average is between 40 to 70. Another interesting fact about the Greenland shark is that it's maturity. It doesn't reach maturity until 150 years old. And after 150, it finally reaches puberty and it could mate and have babies. Even though when they hit puberty, their eyes doesn't even work, they still can't see their children. But that doesn't worry the Greenland shark because these guys always love to live alone, except for the times they're mating. But how can they live for centuries without eyes? Most of the time they live in the deep part of the oceans and they don't really need eyes. They mainly use electricity to see where they're going and where the prey is. So what animal is the enemy of the Greenland shark? Of course, the people are the main enemy. Some cultures like to eat Greenland sharks for food, especially northerners from Greenland and Iceland. But you have to know that the Greenland shark is poisonous, but they realize how to get rid of the poison and that's by making it into beef jerky. And when it's turned into jerky, that's when the poison is neutralized and they can eat it. If anybody wants to eat Greenland shark meat, they can do it in Iceland. But most people that have tried Greenland shark meat, they say it's probably one of the most disgusting meats they have ever eaten. But people of the north, especially the Icelanders, love it. Humans can learn from this creature. Patience and perseverance. It does its job patiently and it doesn't create any stress for itself. And that's one of the main reasons it has a long life. It's kind of like the story, the rabbit and the turtle, where even though the rabbit is much quicker, the turtle will win the race because it's patient. 